how to execute Python, Java, Visual Basic and C Sharp code on Wipad. Let's get started by Java. As a requirement, in order to execute Java code, we need to have the Java development kit installed on our computer. Then here on Wipath, let's install a package that will uh, give us activities to run Java code on our projects. So here on the package manager, let's search for wipath.java.activities. And here we can see the activities package. Let's install it. Package installed. Let's now here search on activities for Java. And here we can see the package activities. So first we need to use the Java scope activity. And here we need to indicate the Java library path. So the path where we have the Java development kit. To get it easily, we can open the terminal and run the command where Java. And here we can see the path, so we need to get it until the GDK folder. So let's copy. And now here on the Java scope, on the Java library path, let's indicate here the path so we could store it on the variable, but let's just keep it simple for the tutorial and paste it here directly. So here we have the paths. So now that we have the Java scope ready, we need to load the jar file. So the package file. And on this case, it will have a function that will return to us the length of the string. So here we can see the code. I have here uh, the file, the jar file, and you can find the link to download this file on the description of this tutorial. So, uh, here, let's write the lower jar activity and it needs to be inside of the Java scope. So uh, now here, let's get the path of the jar file. So let's click here and now let's indicate here the file. So let's just run to see if we get some error or not. So seems okay, no errors. So after loading the jar file, we need to invoke the Java method from that file. So let's write the invoke Java method. And first we have to indicate the method name. So here we can see the method name, it's getLength. So let's indicate the name here. Then we have to indicate the target type. So here we have to indicate the class uh, name. So in this case, it's string length. So let's indicate here. Then we have to pass a parameter so we can see that our uh, function, our method here expects uh, argument, a string, to then return the string length. So here, on the parameters property, let's pass our argument. So let's pass it directly here. So let's pass a string Java, the text Java, the string Java. So then let's get a result that it will be a Java object. So here, let's create the variable Java object. So after running the Java method, we'll get the Java object as output. And then let's convert this Java object to a string. So then we'll use a log message to see the result. So let's write the convert Java object activity. Let's indicate here the Java object. And then let's indicate the type argument. So it will be a string, the result. And now let's create here the variable. So it can be str string length. And now let's here use a log message. And let's print the value of this variable. So in this case, should be returned the number four. So uh, the string length, it's about for charter, so should be that the result. So let's run our project. 
And here we can see that we got a four. So now if we try here to have, for example, another letter, uh, let's run again. And here we can see that we got a five. And that's it about running Java code on WhitePath. Python. So as a requirement, in order to run Python code, we need to have Python installed on our computer. Then let's install a package that will uh, have activities to run Python scripts. So here, let's search for the package ypath.python dot activities and let's install it package installed so now here on activities if we search for python here we can see the activities from the package so first in order to execute python code we need to use the python scope activity and here we'll indicate uh, the path where a python is located on our computer so uh, to know it easily we can uh, just here on the terminal enter where python and execute the command and here we have the python path so at the moment that i recorded this tutorial for some reason i wasn't able to run python code with python 3.11 on ypath for some reason uh, so i will use the python 3.10 on this tutorial so let's copy here the path and let's here store where it says path and now here on library path we have to indicate the path to the dll of python so here i'm just here on the python folder that we have indicated here on the path property and now let's get here the path to the dll so let's copy here the path and let's paste it here then target we have to select the runtime so in this case for this python version it's 64 uh, then uh, it's done here for python scope so after having the scope let's load the python script so let's indicate the path to the script and here we have the Python file and you can download it on the link that it's on the description of this tutorial. So uh, let's just take a look to this Python uh, file. And here we can see that we have a method that returns the sum of these two arguments. So the idea is to pass uh, integer arguments and then to get the sum of them. So here we'll get output that will be a Python object that we'll use it then to evoke the Python method that we have on our Python script. So here, let's declare the variable Python object. And then let's use the evoke Python method. So uh, first let's pass here the Python object on the instance property. Then we have to indicate here on name the Python method. So we can see here the method name. So let's copy and let's indicate here the method name. Then we have to provide the input parameters. So it will be uh, two numbers. So here we can see uh, the argument type. It should be so a collection or a list of numbers so let's create here a variable of type list so here let's define the variable name list parameters for example and now here let's define the variable type and here let's search for system.collections.generic.list and here we have it so let's define uh, the argument type so it needs to be of type object uh, as we can see here on the uh, parameter it's expected an argument type as an object so here we have our variable so now let's initialize it with uh, already the parameters so here we have one and two the two parameters so and let's pass here our 
uh, variable and so we can see that as a result we will get a python object so here let's create the variable pi result object and uh, now it's the same logic that we use uh, with the java so now we will use the get python object activity to uh, parse an object basically to a variable type uh, that we want in our case it will be an integer because we'll get the sum between two numbers so let's pass here the pi result object now here the type argument expect that it's an integer and now let's create here the integer variable and then let's use a log message to display the result so let's here uh, run our uh, file And here we can see that we got three as a result and it's right so the sum so now let's here add a 10 for example let's just run again and here we have the sum between the two numbers run c sharp or visual basic code so to run c sharp or visual basic code it's really simple so here on activities let's search for the activity invoke code and let's use it on our file so first we have to define the language uh, of the code that will invoke so if it will be visual basic or c sharp so in this case uh, i will use c sharp then let's invoke the code so let's click here on edit code uh, let's paste the code so this piece of code takes an integer as input and returns the factorial of that number and then it will print uh, the result on the logs so uh, now here we have to pass the argument so the argument uh, it's the num so here let's create the argument num and then uh, let's pass here the value so let's just create the variable int num and now here on the variables let's see find the default value of this a variable to 5 for example and uh, here it should be of type integer and here on the edit arguments panel let's set to integer and that's it so let's run and here we can see the result so 120 so it's right and that's it for c sharp or visual basics so if you want to invoke visual basic code you just have to switch here to visual basic and place here the visual basic code and that's it for this tutorial if you like it please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications bell so get to find on this tutorial real reason on the channel